After a mid-season slump, suddenly the dubs are rolling, having won seven of eight games. All-star starter Two-Way Wiggs has been making up for the safety presence defensively that Draymond provided, while also fueling the Warriors with his scoring, as against Kyrie and the Nets, Wiggins had 24. While the Splash Brothers were just 5 for 18 from deep range against Brooklyn, they did score 17 consecutive points down the stretch, and had been finding their rhythm entering that game. The most talented bench player in the NBA, Jordan Poole, chipped in with 17 off the pine. This video keys in on the Warriors' wing and defensive depth, even without Draymond, by examining the options making up for Green's absence. Stay tuned to see how Andrew Wiggins is being perfectly utilized in the dub system. Right quick, only 12.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. I left a link in the description for both those platforms. The depth on the wing and generally on the perimeter for the Golden State Warriors goes so deep that it's straight eye-popping. Most notably, their shocking all-star starter Andrew Wiggins, who we'll lead off with in a minute, You've also got a resurrected Otto Porter Jr., a few athletic mobile forwards who are stable on both ends of the floor in Juan Toscano Anderson and the young phenom Jonathan Kaminga. When healthy, they also have the 2015 Finals MVP Andre Iguodala. Then in the backcourt, locking down explosive guards with his lateral quickness, combined with his passion for getting down in a fundamentally sound stance and clamping up, the young glove Gary Payton II, is another reason for Golden State continuing to rank number one in team defense by a wide margin. GP2 is only getting 16.7 minutes per game, but per 36, Glove is snatching 2.8 steals, which would lead the NBA. Still, the fact that Peyton II is still regularly averaging 1.3 steals in under 20 minutes just proves that he's a damn valuable weapon defensively. Without Draymond for the last three weeks, Golden State's had its fair share of hurdles to clear, but they've taken down some legit competition without the DPOY, taking down five top five seeds in the Cavaliers, Bulls, Jazz, Mavericks, and Nets. A big reason for those dubs is the fact that two-way Wiggs is truly able to do everything. Combined with his defensive quickness and instincts in addition to that reach, when he makes big time stuffs, that swings the momentum of games on a nightly basis. Due to those God-given and intelligent abilities, it's easy to see why my fellow Torontonian leads all small forwards in defensive rating. Wiggins is also number two directly behind Miles Bridges in total contested shots among small forwards with 368 total attempts bothered. The man's defensive range and effort are both on point and are at a level we hadn't seen with Andrew in Minneapolis, more on that later on. But it's amazing what happens when you surround the type of talent that Wiggins had always displayed the capacity of having with a few more than competent all-star caliber talents. The Warriors culture rubbed off on him so much to the point where it morphed Andrew into an all-star himself. A lot of people haven't liked it, but Mam was named an all-star due to the fact that he's been a fantastic catch-and-shoot threat, secondary scorer, and perimeter defender for the second seed in the Western Conference. Supported by one of the largest fan bases, not only in basketball, but across the entire world in any sport, Wiggins received a massive amount of support from Dubs Nation, to say the very least. Against the Nets last night, and over the last month, Andrew's consistency and efficiency has been all-star caliber. Wiggs has shot 40% from three in January, and he posted a game-high 24 points on 10 for 18 from the field and four of eight from deep while tallying two blocks and three steals against Brooklyn. Without the most elite defensive player on the team by far in Draymond, who's around a week away from returning, Andrew's now displaying that he's not merely any other marquee two-way talent, but that he's capable of somewhat resembling the all-time great defensive player that Trey is. Good on the Dubs front office for pulling off the deal of a lifetime a few years ago, giving up D'Angelo Russell, Jacob Evans III, and Omari Spellman to acquire Wiggins and a top three protected first round pick that would eventually turn in to some guy named Jonathan Kaminga. Wiggins was tasked with defending Kyrie Irving on an ABC Saturday night primetime game Given Thompson is still finding his legs offensively, and he couldn't guard him, Kyrie did go off for a game-high 32, but most of Uncle Drew's attempts were caused by Andrew's reach and ability to swiftly cover ground with vamped footwork from his days in Minneapolis. 
In terms of his defense on Patty Mills, Air Canada proved equally up to the challenge of switching onto Irving's backcourt partner. As Golden State was blitzing Kyrie in the pick and roll throughout the game, Brooklyn had Mills set ball screens for Irving with an intention to allow Mills to free himself for a look with his man leaving him on that Kyrie blitz. Wiggins reads the play though, showing excellent instincts, screen navigation, and timing right here on this merciless swat right back in the Aussie's grill. Brooklyn gets a tad more creative with Nick Claxton handing it off to Kyrie in the same action just off the ball. Wiggins fluently switches onto Mills, fights through another screen, and forces the sniper from down under into one of the toughest pull-up jumpers of his season. Andrew's impact is further proven in the advanced numbers, as in the 1,456 minutes on the floor he's played, the Warriors have outscored their opponents by 9.4 points per 100 possessions. That's equivalent to the third best in the NBA, while their league best defense is maintained and empowered by Andrew's presence on the floor. Meanwhile, offensively, Steve Kerr's fell in love with one playset based around Wiggins called Head Tap, named after the fact that the cue for the play is the ball handler tapping his head. Around the basket, the head tap calls for an old school cross screen slash flex cut for Andrew. On this play, with Brooklyn switching, Kyrie Irving ends up being tasked to defend Wiggins on a post up. Wiggins misses the shot, but placing trust in Wiggs to execute on those mismatches more often than not isn't a bad call. And that play set is a prime example of how the All-Stars made his money all season. Then on this play, a simple ghost screen for Thompson in transition places Irving in a compromising situation. Andrew taking advantage of an unfit defender against a switch heavy, or in this case, a switch everything scheme, is made much simpler with Clay as a shooting weapon next to him. Having Thompson entails that Brooklyn's more than willing to give up a mismatch rather than an outright open look from deep, even to the extent of putting their top offensive contributor in Kyrie in a vulnerable position. Ghosting the screen forces DeAndre Bembry to guard Clay, which leaves Kyrie on an island against a downhill burst from Wiggins. It's practically like Kyrie isn't even there. His lack of size just gives Wiggins an easy look at the hoop. So you've seen what he's done in the film room for the Golden State Warriors, but it wasn't always smooth sailing for Andrew Wiggins, as back in Minnesota, he didn't have the best time. The player we were always so damn hyped to see when he came out of Kansas displayed flashes of immense upside, but was also incredibly flawed. Of course, the number one pick in the 2014 NBA draft had his nights where he was a versatile wing who was capable of scoring on all three levels while showcasing perimeter defense that made use of his length, lateral quickness, and an ability to switch up and down the positional spectrum. Then, Wiggins had outings when the doubt, passivity, questionable shot selection, and seemingly unengaged mentality more than surfaced. Underwhelming scoring turned into lackluster energy on the other end of the floor. It seemed like Andrew's potential was failing to translate into anything you could build around. A contract that was considered a risk when it was first given ended up becoming a liability. That perceived liability from Minnesota's front office dissolved into Wiggins being someone they wanted to get rid of ASAP. And as the famous saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Unlike his stint in Minnesota, the weight of expectation hasn't been nearly as heavy of a burden upon Wiggins. Andrew morphing into an all-star starter in just his third season after being with the T-Wolves just proves how crucial the organizational aspect of basketball is. With an unstable losing franchise in Minnesota, the expectations to turn around that program may have been way too much to ask. But I want to know your reaction to Wiggins being named an all-star starter. Best answer in the comments section down below earns next video shout out. Top 5 commenters on the speaks board by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's speaks winner is Michael Townsend who says the best thing about the Suns is not one player worried about mine. The only thing from top to bottom is winning. Thanks for every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.